this. It's Rare Whiskey Friday. Welcome to the Whiskey Vault. And it's all from Charles Stella, a patron saint of whiskey. Stella! You patron saint of whiskey. <laughs> That was the three-parter. Ding. <laughs> ding, ding, ding. <laughs> okay, so how do we want to do this? I think we have enough to do a different glass for each whiskey. Okay. Um, they yeah. are, in theory, these are all actual Japanese whiskey. Oh. Now, one of the brands, let's start with that one because I can talk to you about that one first. One of the brands is... And we got some variations on the color. Mitsui. Yes. And they got in a lot of hot water. Okay. We're gonna start with From the who? Mizunara cask. Like uh, in Japan, like legal hot water or Bo more or internet hot water. No, more like one, actual. One counts, one doesn't. No, more like actual whiskey drinkers in Japan who yeah. felt slighted by the distillery. So were they obfuscating? They were obfuscating, and then when the people said, "Look, this is really good," but you're obfuscating, right. their response was some version of like. Uh, you guys don't even understand what we're doing. We're above you and you know, this Ooh. kind of like talking down to them kind of boy. Whoa. Uh, this is all from Which, whiskey. Yeah. Let me know how that works. Yeah, out. right. Yeah. Whiskey Richard, uh, his, I love his uh, website, Japanese Whiskey Reviews. Yes. Um, and he talked a lot about these, but these are actual Mizunara cask, actually made at uh, the Kira, Kira Yoshi distillery. I really like that nose, by the way. Woo! What is that? Mm. It's like, it's overripe pears. And and then this like musty malt yeah. funk. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's really it's uh, si very aromatic, present, and interesting. It's simultaneously deep, dark, rich, and unbelievably fruity. I think you're, you're the, the first the first note you gave, the mm -hmm. pear note, yeah. Yeah, because you know how pears are kind of dry tasting and yeah. not bitter or tart. But just and it's almost because a, a pear note is something that I'll occasionally get in like a white wine. Yeah, even in a dry white wine, you can get like a pear in there. That's what it is. It smells like a yeah. white wine. It yeah. has that wine note in it, actually. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. But then behind that honeyed wine note, there's this malt depth. I really like the nose on it. I this. really like the nose. Surprising. On this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I guess. Uh, well, I mean. You said they were getting into some hot water, and people were saying we we like the stuff; it's good, but you're not being clear and transparent. Mm -hmm. and is that basically what happened? But this is their stuff, whereas the stuff they got in trouble oh, for was sourced. So this is the stuff. They, okay, well, they're making good stuff on the nose. Oh, that's where it gets a little bit thin in the palate. Ooh. All that rich complexity and depth is is. The base notes are there, but there's none of the sweet lingering notes to sort of oil them together. So I'm gonna take a little bit different of a path here. Mm. I really like that first um, flush of flavors there. Mm -hmm. They fall off a cliff pretty damn quick. Mm -hmm. Fully 50% of what I typically expect out of a whiskey to give me whenever I take a sip, it's gone 50% of the way through that. But that first approach, that, that swell that of the is, initial flavors. That is a... That is up there with like a really deep, richly funky Highland, unpeated Highland. I'm getting, so remember the episode of Slimefield where Kramer says, um, you know, the smell of the beach. He's trying to work with Calvin Klein to get the person yeah. to smell the beach. Two sips in and both times I keep getting this flash of memory of Beach, salt water, salt air, sand, salt sunscreen. air. There's some um, like, uh, I'm not sure where the sweet element's coming from in my beach scenario, but it, both times it took me to Sunscreen. a beach. That sweet coconut you had. Well, I, I, I thought that for a second, but it's not artificial enough to be a sunscreen note. What if it was it's like a jungle of flower, flowering blooms next to like a Hawaiian beach? Oh, like, because I've been in Hawaii. Yeah. yeah, yeah so yeah. you know you get that sort of like deep yeah. floral note coming off of some of the beaches? Yeah. I um, so. I actually do really like this. Me too. Um, I wish it lasted longer. Me too. Yeah. Let's switch to their peated release. This is the same distillery. Okay. But it's called the peated, as opposed to the Mizanara. So same distillery. Is it the same mash bill as this, but peated? I mean, it's barley. I my guess is 100% malt. Okay. It's a single malt. Yeah. Right. That's what they call it. And it looks like it's a, maybe a slightly darker color. Eh, just slightly. Yeah. 
Oh. Okay, go ahead. Ooh, that's phenolic, but not smoky. That's weird. Yeah. It's, you know what it reminds me of? There's some type of like spearmint gum type of deal. The I agree with of, that. The smell of a, yeah. But yesterday I was moving around a whole bunch of antique it's, furniture. It's the combination of a spearmint gum and this like a dental office smell. <laughs> yesterday I was moving around a whole bunch of antique wood furniture. Yeah, the antiseptic. And that dusty wood inside of like one of the cupboards yeah. is totally in there. Wow. Like that, wood oil. I really like the nose on this one. This is a very, very different creature than totally the one we just had. If this is the same mash bill, the only difference is the peating process, it completely changed it. I'm expecting like a really minty spearmint I with like, you. There's the smoke. It's, it's so on the nose, it is, an, it is an interesting experiment in saying peat without smoke. Yeah. But on the taste, you're saying the smoke shows up. Yeah, take okay. a sip and you'll see it's not quite ashy, but it is smoky. Medicinal smoky. Mm -hmm. Wow. Almost Campbelltown kind of medicinal smoke. <laughs> this is weird. I like it. Yeah, medicinal spearmint and mint. Wow. Weird. That's I, cool. Honestly, this is still first you impression. You like part. that? I, I do. Appreci I appreciate how unique and weird it is. Yeah. I'm not really digging it. Yeah. It's not really my scene. I yeah. get that. If they had put that in a sherry cask, it would have been up there with like Campbelltown spring banks and stuff. Yeah, it does feel like it's all living on one end of the or spectrum. Or in that family anyway. On one end of the spectrum, and that spectrum has the like the medicinal and uh, like this minty kind of high, bright. Yeah. All right, what's the next one? Okay, the next one is Komogataki Yakushima aged. Yes. And I love this bottle actually. Well, the color is a nice color. <laughs> I really like that bottle. Uh -huh. It just, I mean, hold that bottle like you're pouring. Oh, it's like, right? it's made for the hand. You know what's funny is it looks like a one liter Coke bottle. <laughs> yeah, and they got like a little bit of a bulbous yeah. thing down there and up here. And yeah, then, you then know, it looks sort of like a Coke. Or yeah, like a, a little bit. Yeah. Um, so this is Mars whiskey. It's aged on Yakushima, which is evidently the rainforest island off the coast of Kyosha. This is an oily Kyushu. nose. This is an oily nose. Three years old. Wow, very oily. In theory. This is this is dark, rich, oily wood and caramel and dried leaves. In that order. There is a and mustiness a, to this that um and it's not malt must. It's it's like a, a sherry cask. And there's like a like a molasses element too. That yeah. dark heaviness. Oh, I like the nose on this one too. Ooh. Oh! It is. Oh, I like the taste. It is a slightly charred, slightly charred cherry cask. Yeah. I, I think. And I like the taste more than the nose. And the nose is pretty good. Man, Japanese whiskey's winning me over again. Well, and you know what's when really, it's actually from Japan. You know what's really nice? Is very often, you know, we'd be pouring some Japanese whiskey and it was like, I'm just in Scotland right now. I've yeah, it just tastes like Scotch. I've experienced this in Scotland scores of times. But the, the handful that you've poured me, I'm not squarely in the middle of Scotland. Obviously, really? you're always going to have that Scottish influence because of the origins of Japanese whiskey. Right. But this is very much coming into its own kind of whiskey category. There's stuff happening in the, the few bottles that we've had here that I don't feel comfortable saying I get uh, in scotch. I'm trying to remember a scotch where I've had that type of presentation of pear. It's kind of parallel to like some Speyside Highland stuff. That presentation of peat, mm -hmm. no, I haven't had that in a sketch. Right. And then that kind of like oily, yeah, yeah, wood, caramel, dark leaves, molasses. That's that. Real quick, I know it's be a first impressions. This felt like the nexus between some dark, heavy, thick, oily American whiskeys and some scotches. Oh. That bottle of Japanese. You're about to get to, wait, 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 wait. Don't, don't smell it yet, it's this one. Okay. Don't smell it yet. It is um, dark chocolate and tiramisu. I got the dark chocolate. The oh, and like rum, the, bready, the yeah. breadiness of the tiramisu. Yeah. Like the, the, little, the lady fingers yeah. with the stuff Soaked on Soaked in the. Yeah. Oh yeah. That's nice. Five year old, but it's not sherry over. cask. Yeah, and there's, there's the, the, the chocolate and the caramel Yeah, 
but it's not super sugary. It no. It doesn't go over no. the line with sweetness. White Oak Single Malt Akashi, five-year-old Olorosa Sherry Cast number 1484. Okay, yeah. Non-colored, non-chill filtered. Right on. Yeah, that's really nice. And there's some type of, uh, what is that? I think I'm, I'm getting a vanilla. You know, I found a vanilla. Mmm, that was almost my favorite one until it the was, finish It was a tiramisu. Vanished. This is my favorite one. This weird, funky, sherry, three-year-old. So are we are we're talking about the comprehensive beginning to end the nose and the taste and all that? Yeah, yeah as I would, an entire experience. I would agree. This, the Koma Gataki from Mars. I think, the, like, uh, the overall, that was the best. Mm -hmm. But in terms of, like, my single favorite... To sip. Moment, just a flavor that was presented not long enough, but it was the Matsui. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The fun. Mizunara cask. Yeah. Uh, that was really nice. I just blended the peated with the sherry one that I like. Okay. And so medicinal. Oh, that's that. That is my favorite whiskey from this whole board. Oh, it didn't, the, the peat didn't overwhelm it. It didn't it because it's so. It made it more like a spring bank. You're just blending scotch, you ass. <laughs> I am, yeah. Hey, I fixed it. It tastes it's like scotch, scotch now. <laughs> <laughs> All right, here's to fighting, stealing, and drinking. If you fight me, you fight for a friend. Steal me, you steal your liver's heart. And if you drink, may you drink with us. <laughs>